Hey guys, what's up? JLC back here again, and it is Friday, day two of the draft. We are all smiles because the Vikings did some crazy good stuff day one, so let's talk about it uh, and kind of work our way through the draft and see how it's going to work for the Vikings in day two and day three. So let's kind of, before we get into the draft, let's go into our kind of our mind mindset going into it. We had kind of this group of five players that if they could slip by you see some mock drafts where they do get through and we do kind of snipe one of these elite players that do feel huge needs on the team and then there's kind of this kind of section where it's a big pool of players and you hope the vikings throw the dart and get the right one so going into it you kind of had the elite wide receivers tristan worse i thought was my favorite uh, offensive tackle that could slip through and then javon kinlaw and like round or pick 10 they were all on the board like oh no we're, we're somehow gonna get this what a lucky lucky draft we're looking good we're sky high happy and then by pick by like pick 15 they are all gone and we're like oh no our happiness is creeping down and then the eagles are on the clock at 21 we're all hitting our heads they're gonna take jefferson we're going to hope uh, Mims turns out to be really good. Uh, are we going to take one of these other guys? We will maybe trade down. What are we going to do? And then the Eagles out of nowhere pick Rager over Jefferson, who hopefully is going to be the much better receiver in Jefferson, uh, but seemed to be quite the inexplicable reach uh, there. So the Vikings got very lucky, and they get their guy Justin Jefferson, who I think is kind of Adam Thielen 2.0. Very similar skill sets. They're both mainly... Or they both do their best work, I'll say, in the slot. They can both play in the outside, but they're both going to be elite slot receivers. That's usually where the best route runner, where the best route runners like to go, because they can go inside or out. So we have that. He gives us the speed to do some deep balls, kind of like Thielen, right? He he's not an elite deep ball catcher. Uh, Diggs was definitely better, but he can he can get it done. He's not elite in the red zone, but he can get it done. And that's what you kind of get out of Jefferson as well. Their fortes in the middle of the field pick up those first downs and those chunk 10 to 15 yard plays. And then they'll give you a handful or, you know, every now and again, you'll be able to go throw it deep to them and they'll get, be able to make the guy and make some play. And run after, run after the catch is again, is and it's a little extra that they give, but again, not elite at it so i kind of see them as suvs and that's kind of what the vikings have they have a full garage full of suvs that are pretty good to great at almost everything but not elite at a single thing uh so this is where we don't have that sports car we lost stefan diggs and we replaced him with an suv we don't have we still don't have that big half ton pickup to go out and pull down passes in the back of the end zone so uh, what does this mean for the vikings i still think that means we're in the hunt for a wide receiver to complement what we still would like uh on the team so I think some options that are still would be available would be if we would want one in the round two, I think it'd be a little bit early. But if KJ Hamler is very appeasing to the Vikings, I think he would make sense. He would be probably the second best deep threat in this draft class behind Ruggs. Uh, so I think he'd be very intriguing. If he learns how to catch the ball in the NFL, that'd be very great. Uh, he'd give us kind of like Harvin, bring up Harvin. He's coming out of retirement, and we could bring him back as well if he still has enough tread on the tires. Uh, if he's anywhere close to resembling 2012 Harvin, I'd make that happen. And then also, uh, maybe a very much of a roll of the dice candidate would be Chase Claypool. 6'4", 4'4", Gives you that big-bodied receiver outside threat, kind of like a poor man's DK Metcalf that can just do one job, learn one or two routes, and you get the job done as a wide receiver three. I think that would be really fun for the Vikings to be able to have that flexibility and have somebody that can take the top off and make the safeties um, be a little bit more respectful to our teams, get them out, them out of the box from Dalvin Cook a little bit more routinely than I think we'd be getting if it's just Thielen and Jefferson that are still good at taking the top off, but not that elite 
deep level threat that some of these other guys might provide. Uh, if you want this that half ton pickup guy, I got like T Higgins might provide that, but he's probably a second round guy. And I think Thielen and Jefferson are all probably a little bit better as just straight possession receivers uh, than they are deep threat. So if we do want a specialty guy, I'd rather it that deep threat and. We, we're not going to see many Cousins play action rolls to the left bombs to Jefferson or Thielen. We, we want that straight digs replacement still. So that would, would be pretty cool to be able to find that guy. But a garage full of SUVs done is not necessarily a bad thing because they work and work out so interchangeably. We just have that problem is they all want to be in the slot. That's where they were all work the best at. And if we do draft another guy, Tajay Sharp, our free, free agent acquisition, is going to have a very tough time making the roster over these other guys. But that's enough talking of Jefferson. Let's move on because we also had pick 25. Now, uh, at this point, the elite offensive tackles are mostly all off the board except for Josh Jones. The Vikings could have pulled the trigger on him. I thought he would have been... A very good pick right there, uh, but we traded back, which I thought was a correct choice because there are still many options still available. Uh, so we traded back, picked up a fourth and a fifth, and we picked up Jeff Gladney, the pit bull, wide receiver, wide or cornerback. Now he's called that pit bull mentality, but I almost want to call it a Chihuahua. He's five foot ten, but he thinks he's like six foot four and two hundred fifty pounds playing corner. He's like like he's a creative player in Madden that you just put in the lab, turned the stats up to a hundred, and got after it. Uh, so that's what he reminds me of. He's very feisty on the outside, sometimes to his detriment, and can kind of sort of start fights. Uh, out there, um, but um, a little bit feisty, and you, you gotta love the attitude. You kind of have to have that to be a really good football player, and that type of mentality can kind of find its way going over the defense. And I think we could really use that, kind of losing some of our identity this this off season, and we could really regain it with Gladney. I think he's a great complement to the rest of our defense. The only problem he gives is currently our two top corners, Hughes and Gladney, are like 5'10". Uh, we saw what happened in Hughes when he played the Cowboys because when they had two big body receivers, but now they have three. I know the Cowboys aren't in our division, aren't the elite team do have to cover, but there are other teams that have similar big body receivers. And if there's over more than one, that's good. The Vikings are being in a tough situation to cover them. Now, what we did lose in Rhodes is size. Yeah, he was bad, but he gave us a, a matchup that we could work with. Uh, but now we don't really have that unless we really like what you see out of Holton Hill. Uh, the Vikings are, I think, are still in the market for an outside six foot two or so corner like Dantzler that would be available in the third round so I think, I think that would be a great pickup as well if we could go out and double dip in both of these positions as well but you're thinking well there's still offensive tackle we need we'll get to that in a little bit um but I, I really like the Glanny pick. He can play inside and out same like Mike Hughes hopefully that helps Hughes take his game to the next level and we can have a good corner group uh but i really don't think the pressure is that high at all he's replacing xavier rhodes who was like the worst corner in the league so he can play anywhere close to average it's an immense improvement so i think the vikings improve both sides of the ball dramatically already but i don't think they are done with the fourth and fifth round picks they got out of the trade back and with the other teams that were in the market for offensive tackle per Perhaps a veteran ex Pro Bowl offensive tackle from Washington named Trent. They aren't in the market anymore, and the Vikings picked up more ammo. So I think it's very, very likely that the Vikings pick up former Pro Bowl left tackle Trent Williams from Washington any minute. I think the only reason it wasn't done already is for one, there was that a little bit of a market because other teams weren't sure what they would, were doing in the draft, especially in round one. And also, the Vikings could have maybe potentially got the kid from Iowa, Tristan Wurst, to slide down. They probably would have rathered that instead. They would roll the dice with the rookie. But that didn't happen. They can swap a fourth, a fifth, maybe both picks to Washington. 
and all of a sudden be set at left tackle. And what in the world would this be? This would be the best first round in, in like NFL history. Are you kidding? Are you kidding me? We started this off season with just pick twenty five. So we traded Diggs, already had twenty five, picked up Jefferson, we we picked up Gladney and pick up Trent Williams. All three starters. Jefferson could be even be like a rookie of the year candidate, maybe. It'd be tough to probably beat Burrow or some of these other guys. Uh and Gladney's gonna be a huge piece to our defense, and Williams probably be the left best left tackle I've ever seen the Vikings have. Unless he maybe can make the case for rookie year Matt Khalil, but that'd be the closest thing. And then it's it's a huge dip after that. So what a huge bombshell win for the Vikings if this all works out. And we still have some pieces that we need. There's still some great three techs available. That'd be great in this in day two to look forward to with Bladlock and Ibuki. And like I said, a guy like Dancer would be great. Maybe KJ Hamler. Maybe if we don't know the future of of um our safety Harrison or um Anthony Harris that one um if we don't know the feature for him maybe we look for a corner Antoine Winfield still available maybe he could slip all the way down to the Vikings I would have been okay with him at 31 because he can play nickel as well so we could still get some playing time in if he's not going to be a starting safety this year but safety is definitely an option today so look forward to that defensive tackle and wide receiver and cornerback are still options and look forward to that Adam Scheffler tweet. Make sure it, the bar isn't a Barry McCockner account. And look forward to that tweet about the Vikings traded for Trent Williams within a few hours. Uh, that's going to be exciting. We'll see you guys probably tomorrow another update video then. We'll see you guys then.